And Congressman, you were able to watch from home in Kentucky. We noticed that last night the chamber wasn't necessarily full, but uh, you watched the entire speech, and thanks for joining us this morning to discuss it. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a shame that we didn't have more people there. All members of Congress have been vaccinated or had the opportunity to be vaccinated. I thought it would have been a great example to the country that if you go through the vaccination process, you can get back closer to normal. But uh, they limited to just 20 people per per house, for a GOP house. So I guess there were 80 people total with half the Senate and half the House members there. Well, let's talk about the details of the speech. The president really detailing a number of things, including his infrastructure bill, and also obviously with the Republican response that was, was given last night by your party. Basically, uh, it was called the biggest job-killing tax hike in a generation. What, are, what is your response to President Biden's plan? Do you agree with your, your colleagues of the Republican Party? We're one, there's some, there's some opportunities for bipartisanship on the infrastructure bill. A lot of us want to do roads, bridges, highways, and I know on the High River where you represent, there are a lot of uh, barge traffic, so we have issues to deal with that. The problem is just the increases in taxes, and, and, and it's really, to me, more the spending. That we already spend $4 trillion as a, as a country on our annual budgets. You're talking about another four trillion that he's talking about spending plus we've already spent two trillion so we're looking at 10 trillion dollars spent this year or appropriated this year to be spent and you know there's some real concern about inflation which is even though he says he's not going to tax people under 400,000 if you get inflation growing again people on fixed incomes are really affected by that Jack Kemp used to call that the biggest tax of all so we really have to be careful about the economics and so we're not just opposing everything he wants to do we just want to make sure we do it correctly well, Congressman, as we talk about the, the, the tax hikes, uh, he's, he's claiming everyone over $400,000, the president is, will be the only people to see this. Uh, according to, to uh, data, basically only 1.8% of Americans make that up. It, it is a way to pay for this. That's something that often both sides of the aisle criticize each other for whenever there's a, a new initiative, but there's not a way to pay for it. The president has, right. has found a way, at least in his proposal, to pay for this. What's the alternative to pay for the infrastructure? Because both parties do agree, like you've brought up, that we do need improvement there. If, if this is not the way to pay for it with taxing people who make over $400,000, what do you think the best way is? Of course, the infrastructure is not, is not um, $4 trillion. Infrastructure, we think, could be about $600 billion to be effective to move forward. And, and you can pay for it through already appropriated money. We've had, we're appropriating, you know, we just appropriated $1.9 trillion through the American uh, Recovery Plan, or I think that's what the president calls it. And there's still money not spent. So we can reprogram money that's not spent and move forward that direction. The other thing is, I think we should look at loopholes. I voted to say if you're a corporation and you, you're not operating it. There's some Caribbean countries that some of these corporations literally just have P.O. boxes in. You know, if you're going to do that, just avoid taxes. I'm, I'm for t addressing that. Uh, and But uh, just we had the economy moving so well with the previous tax cuts and jobs act that we had for it we're only in this to the president kind of talked about this economic problem like we're in the great depression and we need this kind of spending to get out of it and i think once we we lift uh, the restrictions on government the economy is going to recover on its own and you brought up earlier congressman the idea that there are from what you've heard last night opportunities to work together We've not seen a lot of that over the last few years. Republicans and Democrats coming together for bipartisan efforts. What do you think is the key to making that happen in this instance? You certainly didn't see much effort over the last four years of the minority, the Democratic Party trying to work with the president. I think that, that I've actually been to the White House. I met with the president personally in the Oval Office on what he talked about last night. He called ARPA-H, which is a advanced research agency. And we talked about it for the cures for Alzheimer's, cures for um, uh, diabetes. He's very interested because of his son, Bo, cures for cancer. And that's an area that we can, we agree, we could spend money, we could make the effort and move forward. What we've done with Operation Warp Speed, what President Trump unleashed a year ago, was the private sector and government working together, focused on single-mindedly on a cure, uh, a vaccine for COVID, which we, we, we had. Some of these other diseases are far more complicated than, than a single virus, I understand that. But if we can unleash the same kind of effort on Alzheimer's, diabetes, and, and cancer, just imagine uh, the difference we can make in the world. The difference we've already made 
in America. The rest of the world is not where we are with COVID. Europe's on lockdown. We see the horrendous stories coming out of India because of the decisions President Trump made and President Biden made. That would have been nice if he had reached back and said, thanks for the effort President Trump made on Operation Warp Speed. And now we're moving forward and not only getting 100 million vaccinated like he had that was on target to do when he came into office. We've got 200 million people vaccinated. The rest of the world's nowhere near where we are and there are reasons for that, and it's a, a vast uh, private sector pharmaceutical industry. And so uh, the president kind of talked about that and some concerns about putting price controls on pharmaceutical industries that Europe has done. And he compared us to the rest of the world, what we spend on pharmaceuticals, and we do spend too much. But if we don't spend enough, we're going to be like Europe, where they're still in lockdowns when we're getting people vaccinated. And you talk about the president comparing us to other countries last night. That was a part of the speech to talk about the competition and about America moving forward. For, for us to have some of these, these different programs the president is proposing, uh, is it impossible to do it without raising taxes? Because essentially that does seem to be with the Republican Party one of the main issues is that the president is, is proposing all of this money. He has a way he believes that he can tax people, but Republicans are going to fight that. Are taxes being raised just a part of how government works and will, something we'll have to do eventually and no one really wants to pay more taxes, but we hope to see the benefits of it? Or is there a possibility to have a lot of progress in our country to compete globally without raising taxes? Well, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And China is absolutely our competitor. Russia obviously is, is in the picture, but they're more of a, a national security issue that we have to deal with, a world issue, than an economic competitor. They're just not economically strong. China is. China is because they've taken a lot of our intellectual property. But it gets to the point, do we compete with China because we're going to spend $4 trillion, or do we compete with China because of our private sector? There's a big move to to uh, recharging stations and electric cars in, in, the, in the bill. I can tell you there's a company called Rivion who's making product not too far from where you are, in, in uh, normal Illinois, I believe is where they are. There are, uh, we know what's going on with Tesla and all the other companies. You know, private investment is gonna take care of this. And we need to, the government can do research and move forward, but we don't have to build charging stations. You know, the government didn't go around and build gas stations everywhere in the world. The, my, our view of it is the market's gonna take care of that in a far more efficient way than government can. So we're not gonna defeat China because we spend $4 trillion. We're gonna defeat China because we develop the intellectual property and develop it and putting it into place. And if you start taxing investment, like the president's talking about, then that takes crowds out some of the private sector investment. So it's just a different in philosophy. We all agree on the same goal. We absolutely want the 21st century to be the American century like the 20th was. The question is, how do we get there and what's different? And quite honestly, I think until we get to the next election, that's going to define that.